Hello, I'm Chris and welcome to another program. Now, here's an interesting question. What's the difference between council tax and the mafia protection racket? Well, in my view, the only difference is if you don't pay council tax, they threaten you psychologically with threats of financial penalties and the possibility of imprisonment. And if you don't pay a mafia protection racket, they threaten you physically. So there you have it. Both systems, you pay vast sums of money to keep a minority in wealth, I'm talking about council tax senior executives, whilst you get nothing back of your choosing except psychological or physical torture if you don't pay them. The only real difference is the council send you their propaganda magazine that we have to pay for, telling us how marvellous they are, thus enabling them to justify their own existence. Both systems are totally undemocratic, although the Mafia doesn't make any claims to be democratic, whereas the Council constantly peddle the democracy lie again to justify themselves. So in that sense the Mafia is more honest, as at least they don't pretend to be something they're not. Now what's this got to do with mass house building, especially on the Green Belt, I hear you say? Well don't worry, I'm coming to that. First, let's look at what council tax really is, because the council is supposed to represent the will of the people. I personally think they represent generating money for a minority, that, and they couldn't give a jot about the people. In reality, I, along with an increasing tidal wave of people, are beginning to realise council tax is an illegal contract that requires tacit consent and mass ignorance to survive. To me, it's a fraud. Before I go any further, I'm not here to give you any legal advice. You can make of this whatever you want. I'm just explaining what I've researched. Please, please do your own research and don't just accept what I'm saying. Now here are some facts. We now live under HM Parliaments and Governments PLC. In my view the role of government and local government is to steal as much money off the people as humanly possible in taxes and petty fines to allow HM Parliaments and Governments PLC to make money. In turn, this allows them to pay off a constantly inflating national debt that doesn't exist. It's the banking usury scam, which is another subject that I may go into on another occasion. Now here's an interesting question. Why isn't anyone in the mainstream political arena making this fact known? I think it's because they've all got their noses in the trough. Let's face it, any MP who's on a very good salary with perks going public with this information, it would be a form of political suicide. It's not a conspiracy, but a fact of which the truth is there for all to see, for those who want to see it or can see it. The scam relies upon skillfully hiding the facts from students and so-called professionals, and as I've said before, tacit consent, whereby the overall majority of people, rather like sheep, simply accept paying council tax without question. Now here's another question. Do you know why the exceptionally rich are exceptionally rich? Well, it's because they don't pay tax. We sometimes get major headlines about companies avoiding tax, but that's just to keep the masses happy and give the heart of thinking the idea the government is doing something about it. In reality, the government can't do anything about it because the exceptionally rich realise tax is paid by consent. It's optional. And they pay very clever accountants and legal people to, get to tell the government's very clever accountants and legal people 
what they already know. Now back to council tax, sorry I mean contract. Every year around April every householder is sent a council tax bill. In reality this is not a bill but an offer of contract because the council is raising money for HM Parliaments and Governments PLC. It's nothing to do with democracy. We, don't, we didn't vote for HM Parliaments and Governments PLC. The government is just a sort of middleman, I suppose, or shall we say the circus comes to town. They're the sort of jokers in the pack, shall we say. Now, under the 1882 Bills of Exchange Act, a contract must be signed in wet ink under the agreement of both parties who must enter into the, con enter into the contract voluntarily. Now, I've never signed such a contract with the council and I don't know anyone else who has. People simply pay the incorrectly named council tax, which is a lie because it's a contract, and part with their hard-earned money without a second thought. I know of people that have sent a letter to their local council stating the facts and politely declining from the council's offer of contract and stop and they stop paying it. I don't know what happens in Broxburn but in other councils their policy is to ignore such letters. Some councils eventually issue a summons which is against the law. Only a court can issue a summons signed by a judge. After that the council employ the heavies, bailiffs who are sometimes accompanied by the police. The bailiffs have as much right to enter your property as a double glazing salesman. It's nothing to do with the police as no crime has been committed. They usually chant the Government Finance Act 1992. You can't be in breach of it as it's an act. An act is a statute of which comes under statute law which is by consent. The police should only be concerned with common law which is causing injury, loss or harm. Statutes that are passed by governments are contracts that you agree to. How can we agree to a contract that hasn't been signed by any party? Now at this point most people say what can we do about it? Well first it's important not to simply accept what I've just said and again please do your own research. Next it's important to call council tax what it really is. To me it's an illegal council contract. I call it the council protection racket. In a small way if enough people keep calling it the council protection racket eventually the average person may get a voice. When people are fearful of government, what we have now, that's a dictatorship. When government is fearful of the people in a peaceful way, that's democracy. I personally would not advise not paying the council protection racket as the council have that all sewn up and it will lead you to endless problems. When I rejected the proposed housing development and submitted my humorous 25 page report to the council it not only made it into the local but also the national press. I didn't contact the newspapers they contacted me. Even though it made the local and national press as well as their internet websites nobody locally responded to my report. In fact I think only a few people locally know about it. Nationwide though and even overseas I'm still getting people contacting me. It seems there's more apathy in the home counties, especially Broxburn, than anywhere else. I'm in contact with some people that are thinking of deducting a small percentage from their council protection racket, or council tax if you want to call it by the incorrect name, and giving them a written reason why with a copy of that letter to their local MP 
and to the foreign press. The reason they are doing it is in protest of their local council steamrolling over major planning decision, decisions and not listening to the people. The amount they are deducting from their council contract, protection racket, whatever you want to call it, is not enough to warrant the full force of the council's made up laws. It's just a few pounds. Just enough to send a message without causing problems. The advantage is there is a lot of people planning this form of action. Now I'm not advising doing this, I'm just stating what's happening elsewhere. The borough of Broxman have nothing to worry about as where I live hardly anyone seems to give a damn. Thanks for listening and please remember to subscribe and tell others.